we want to find the area inside the loop of the limousine given by the equation r equals three minus six sine theta graphed here in blue. And so our goal here is to find the area of this inner loop or the shaded region here. To find the area bounded by a polar curve, we use the area formula, area equals one half times the integral of r squared integrated with respect to theta from alpha to beta. So we know r is equal to three minus six sine theta, but we have to find the interval of integration, which would be the interval that would trace out this inner loop of the limousin. And we'll find this interval two ways. We'll first use the graphing calculator, and then we'll do it by using our equation by setting r equal to zero. Notice when r is zero, we'd be at the pole. So if we can find the angles where we're at the pole, we should be able to determine on which interval this loop would be traced. But let's begin using the graphing calculator, and we are going to trace this inner loop using degrees, not radians, even though we have to use radians in our integral. So let's press the mode key and make sure our calculator is in degree mode as well as polar mode as we see here. And then we'll press y equals, enter our equation, which I've already done. And now let's press the window to make sure it is set correctly. We'll press the window key. Because we're in degree mode, we'll have theta from zero to 360. And let's change the theta step to five degrees. And let's change the intervals for x and y from negative 10 to positive 10. And now let's press graph. Here we have a pretty good graph of our curve. So let's square the window by pressing zoom option five for z square. And now we'll press the trace key and notice that when theta is zero degrees, we'd be at the point three zero, which would be this point here. We want to determine on which interval we would trace this inner loop. So we'll press the right arrow, and notice that when theta is 30 degrees, or pi over six radians, we're at the pole, and notice as theta increases, we're tracing out that inner loop, which means this is the interval we'll use for the definite integral. So we'll keep going until we return to the pole, and notice that at 150 degrees, we're back at the pole, and we've traced this inner loop. So the interval we'll use is from 30 degrees to 150 degrees, which would be from pi over six radians to five pi over six radians, which means the area is equal to one half times the integral of, again, r squared would be the quantity three minus six sine theta squared d theta from pi over six radians to five pi over six radians. Another way to find this interval of integration would be to set r equal to zero and determine at which angles the point would be at the pole. Notice if we set r equal to zero, we'd have zero equals three minus six sine theta. So if we solve this for sine theta, we would subtract three and divide by negative six. We'd have one half equals sine theta. So if we limit theta, to the interval from zero to 360 degrees, or from zero to two pi radians, if we look at the unit circle, notice how sine theta is equal to one half at pi over six radians, as well as five pi over six radians, which is the same interval we found using the graphing calculator. Notice how just by analyzing the graph, it's not that easy to determine this interval of integration. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this. We'll begin by squaring the quantity three minus six sine theta. So we'd have one half times the integral of, we'd have nine, and then we'd have minus 36 sine theta, and then plus 36 sine squared theta. Normally we'd factor out the greatest common factor, but in this case, I think we'll go ahead and distribute the one half so let's write this as the integral of nine halves minus 18 sine theta plus 18 sine squared theta d theta from pi over six to five pi over six. Now the reason I wanted to do this is we have to perform a substitution here 
for sine squared theta, which would make it more difficult to keep track of the constant that we factored out. And we'll use this power reducing formula here for sine squared theta. So we'll substitute one half times the quantity, one minus cosine two theta for this sine squared theta. So we'd have plus eighteen times one half times the quantity one minus cosine two theta Notice how this would be nine times the quantity one minus cosine two theta. So we'll go ahead and distribute here and then combine like terms. So we'd have nine halves minus eighteen sine theta and then we have plus nine minus nine cosine two theta. Well nine halves plus nine would be nine halves plus eighteen halves which would be twenty-seven halves. Everything else stays the same. So now we'll find the antiderivative. But notice how when integrating cosine two theta, we do have to perform u substitution, where u would be equal to two theta, and therefore differential u equals two d theta, which means one half du equals d theta. So we'll have an extra factor of one half, when integrating cosine two theta. So the antiderivative of twenty-seven halves with respect to theta would be twenty-seven halves theta. And then we'd have minus eighteen times the integral of sine theta, which is equal to negative cosine theta. This becomes plus eighteen cosine theta. And then we have minus nine times the antiderivative of cosine two theta which would be one half sine two theta. So this would be nine halves sine two theta. Let's continue this on the next slide. So when theta is five pi over six, we'd have twenty-seven halves times five pi over six plus eighteen cosine five pi over six minus nine halves sine two times five pi over six, which would be ten pi over six or five pi over three. And then when theta is pi over six, we'd have twenty seven halves times pi over six plus eighteen cosine pi over six and minus nine halves sine two times pi over six, which would be pi over three. Next we'll find these trig function values. So cosine five pi over six would be equal to negative square root three divided by two, minus nine halves times sine five pi over three is equal to negative square root three divided by two. Cosine pi over six is equal to square root three divided by two. And sine pi over three is equal to square root three divided by two. Now to save some time, I've already determined these approximate values. This is approximately twenty-three point six five one six, and this is approximately eighteen point seven five nine nine. And therefore, the approximate value of our definite integral which again would be the area of this inner loop, would be approximately 23.6516 minus 18.7599. So we'll say the area is approximately 4.8917, and this would be square units. Now this is a lot of work. So let's go back to the original integral 
and check our work using the graphing calculator. Meaning we'll evaluate this integral here on the graphing calculator. Before we do this though, it's important to make sure the calculator is back in radian mode. So we'll press the mode key, highlight radian, press enter, go back to the home screen, and then for one half we'll press point five, and then math nine brings up the integral. So we have pi divided by six, right arrow, five pi divided by six, right arrow, our integrand is the quantity three minus six sine theta. We want to square this. Right arrow, the variable of integration is theta. And enter. So if we compare this value to the value that we found, notice our value is slightly different because we did round these two values here and then find the difference. But our approximation is very close. I hope you found this helpful.